Hey, what's going on guys? So the next contest is finally here. USA Gundam Store and myself are bringing you the Gundam Artifact Contest. So obviously the theme for this contest is going to be the Gundam Artifact line, line of small little kits that are kind of meant to look like uh, resin uh, garage kits, but they're actually plastic model kits. So far only Volume 1 is out. Volume 2 is coming out, but Volume 2 won't be out by the time for you to really be able to enter it in this contest. So basically you're limited to just Volume 1, which is just the five kits, the bar alarms, the Excess, the Nightingale, the Hainu, and the Rick DS. But anyway, if you missed the announcement of this contest and all the details that I explained on the live stream on the USA Gundam TV channel last Friday, today I just want to let you all know about the contest. So here is all the details that you guys need to know about that, including uh, rules for entry, how to entry, the judges, and the judging criteria, and the prizes, all that good stuff you guys need to know. So. First of all, the deadline is December 10th, so just make sure you keep that in mind. And that is something that I do want to ask you guys about, because a couple people I have seen already commenting about that they think it's a little bit uh, fast. It gives you guys, well, it should give you guys about seven and a half weeks now at this point, eight weeks from when we announced the contest originally last Friday. And I was thinking that should be enough time, you know, to work on just these little kits. But I know that some of you guys, for where you're living in the world and with how shipping is these days, if you would like to enter the contest, and you think that that's not really going to give you enough time if you think like, oh, if I order the kit today, it's going to take a month to get to me. If you're in that particular situation and you would like more time, reach out to me and let me know, comment or send me a message or something like that. If I hear from a number of people that they really think they would like to enter, but they would need some more time just because they need to get their hands on the kit and it's going to take a while, then I'll consider pushing back the deadline. But for now, it's December 10th, and that's what it'll stay at until further notice. If there's any changes, of course, I'll let you guys know. Before we get into the rules for entry, just want to talk a little bit about what we're looking for for this contest. So obviously, we're looking for you guys to just be creative, show off all your modeling skills, uh, techniques, and then your creativity with how you're going to make it unique. With this kit only having volume one and five kits to choose from, you're pretty limited in terms of your options for that. So what we wanna see you guys do is really flex your creativity, really make your kit stand out because say, for example, you choose the Nightingale, you can assume probably 15, 20 other people are gonna choose the Nightingale. So what are you gonna do with yours that makes it stand out from the rest of them, for example. So I've always been the believer of the concept that the more limitations you put on yourself, the more creative you're forced to be. So that's what we're looking for with this contest. Yes, you are limited to a very small amount of some very small little kits, but what you do with that will be what sets you apart from the rest and what will make you one of the winners if you're planning on entering and putting in the work and you know making something cool out of the kits. So that's what we're looking for basically, and I'll get into some of the judging criteria a little bit more, but it's basically going to be kind of GBWC style rules where kind of a lot of stuff that you're kind of able to do almost whatever you want, but there are some rules, so I'll get into that now. Um, you can only enter one kit per person, so that's pretty normal for a contest. You can't enter uh, multiple entries, and it is open uh, worldwide, so no matter where you are in the world, even though the contest is sponsored by USA Gundam Store, no matter where you are in the world, you can enter. And now this is, next thing is something different from what we normally do. Normally, I would have you guys uh, build something new specifically for the contest, but in this case, because the line has only been out for like six or eight months or something like that, not very long, um, you can enter a build that's already completed. So say if you got the line like as soon as it came out and you made something cool and that's what you want to enter even though it's already done like a month, two months ago or something, whatever. You can enter it in this contest, but if you've entered it in a previous contest of mine, then you can't enter, which I think probably only applies to like one or two people. But if you've already entered it in a previous contest, you can't enter it now. But as far as your finished build, it should be comprised of one singular mecha. But that said, you can kit bash between the different artifact kits. But your main kit has to be just only comprised of artifact parts. So you can't use like some Gumpla, other different Gumpla parts or like some 30 minutes missions parts. Just because of the size, I don't think that would really be feasible anyway. Uh, but you can't also kit bash with like some other different minis, like some Warhammer. Uh, figures or something like that, kit bashing with that will not be allowed. It has to be just comprised of Gundam artifact parts, but you can kit bash in anyway. It should just be one single mech. So you can't do like a diorama with two or three of them all together in one. Like say, for example, you wanted to make the Nightingale and the High New fighting each other in like a custom a battle diorama. That would be cool, but for this, we want you guys to focus on just one single mech. Now that said, well, we do want you to use only Gundam artifact parts. You can use a little bit of plot plate here and there. For example, if you want to modify the joints, because the kits are fixed pose, if you need to modify the joint, you need to kind of use some plot plate to like rebuild one of the joints or something like that. You can do that. So you can use a little bit of plot plate, putty, these kind of things to basically modify or enhance the build 
in that way. But all the parts should be from the artifact kits. Um, so yeah, a diorama is possible. You can enter a diorama if you want, or a vignette, or a base. Whatever you enter along those lines it will be considered as part of the creativity portion of how we're judging your kit. So uh, if you're making a diorama, just keep in mind that will be kind of considered as all part of the whole thing. And as I said just a second ago, you can't use multiple kits, but whatever else you use in the diorama is fine if you use some like building parts or little cars or people. The kits are pretty small, so I mean, you're not going to be able to find, I don't know, maybe many parts that would work in that scale. I'm not sure exactly what even the scale of the artifact kits is, but they're pretty small. So anyway, whatever else you use in the diorama is fine, as long as like the main subject is just a single uh, mecha, a single mobile suit. Now, the last couple things that you guys might be wondering about, LEDs. Yes, you can use LEDs. Those are totally fine. It's going to be challenging, but that would definitely set you years apart if you go the extra mile of installing tiny little LEDs into these tiny kits. That would definitely stand out. And the other thing would just be 3D printing. So you guys can use 3D printing for making aspects of the diorama if you're making a diorama, but no 3D printing for making parts for the kit. So again, the main kit itself needs to be comprised of artifact parts only. Uh, if you're making a diorama outside of the outside of the main kits, if you want to 3D print like uh, t some tiny little cars or trees or buildings or something, that's fine. You can do that if you want to. Now, how to enter the contest is going to be a little bit different from normal, just because, like I said, it doesn't have to be a new project, so you don't have to enter the usual uh, entry email like I've had you guys do if you've entered any of my contests in the past. But for this one, I just want you guys just to send your finished photos just once you're all completed, just before the deadline of December 10th. You don't have to wait until the day of December 10th or right after. If, if you're done on, like, December 1st or November 20th or something like that, whenever you're done, you can send your your finished entries, you're going to send them to my email, which is zacharillisofficial at gmail.com. And please use the subject title of artifact contest. So it's just easier for me to sort through those emails. And in your email, you need to include 10 images, 10 images of your final build. So it should show the front, back, left side, right side, you know, above, uh, whatever you need to show. And it should be a mix of close up photos so we can you know, see everything in detail. And then full frame photos so we can see the entire thing as a whole to get a full sense of it, especially if you're doing, you know, like a diorama or a vignette or something so we can get a good look at the entire thing. So 10 images should be enough for you guys to show it off in pretty good detail. That said, if you do want to include more in the way of just additional information in the email or a couple of work in progress photos, you can include those additionally. So it would be your 10 uh, finished photos and then say you want to include like two work in progress photos to show like specifically something that you did that may not be very apparent to myself and other judges, then you can include that if you want. But additional information, additional work in progress photos are not required, so you don't have to do that. It's just you can submit that uh, if you want to just make sure that the judges know exactly kind of more about what you did or kind of the reasons behind what you did, for example. And one last note about sending your guys' photos. Again, guys, I've mentioned this in past contests. Please send the photos within the email. Don't send it as like a, a link to some other site where I need to go get the photos or a link to like a Google Drive link or something. If your images don't fit in a single email, you can break up the images to so send like two images per mail and just send like five emails. That's fine. Uh, that's much easier for me to just pull them directly out of the email rather than have to, having to use some links. And then sometimes permissions don't work and I have to email you guys back like oh, I can't access the photos. And it's just, uh, it can cause problems. So the best way to go is just put the photos directly in the email. That way I can get them easily and there's not going to be any issues. And that should cover it for the rules. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but there will be three winners at the end. So it'll just be first, second, and third. How it's gonna work for the prizes is the first place winner will have first pick amongst the three different prize options. Second place winner will have second pick. And then the third place winner will just uh, have whatever prize is left over at the end. So I might as well then at this point, let you know what the prizes are going to be. The prize options, like I said, there's gonna be three options to choose from. Uh, and all three of the options are going to include a set of US Economic Store nippers and 10 bottles of SMS paints. And you guys will, it'll be a very apparent why in just a second when I talk about who the judges are, but 10 bottles of SMS paint of your guys' choice. So whatever they have in stock there, you can choose 10 bottles of those. The US Economic Store nippers and then the three main kits that you guys will have to choose from uh, will be the RG Hainu the HGC Nightingale and the Master Grade Virtue. So it'll be those three main kits and then each of those prize packs will come with the nippers and the 10 bottles of paint as well. So those are the prizes, very cool, uh, very big kits. So hope you guys are excited about that. Very opposite of the subject of this contest being very small and all the prizes are very big. But anyway, some cool things to choose from and all new, like brand new kits. So 
those will be exciting. So of course, thank you to SA Gnome Store for supplying those. Now, the judges for the contest will be myself, the US Economic Store staff will also be involved in the judging as well as our special guest judge for this contest is going to be Scott uh, Taylor, who is the owner of SMS Paints. So one reason why we want to include some SMS Paints in the prizes as well. So thank you to Scott for agreeing to help with the judging of this contest and just to check out some SMS paints and other different modeling supplies and stuff. If you guys haven't, we carry all that stuff at USA Gundam Store, so definitely check that stuff out. And just to briefly go into a little bit more detail, now just what we'll be looking at uh, as far as the judging goes, it'll be based on three criteria. Number one, your basic building skills like nub removal, seam line removal, mold line removal on these kits. They're quite small and they do have a lot of seam lines on them if you guys have built them or if you've seen anything about them. Uh, so seam line removal will definitely be important, you know, how well your seams are removed and how clean everything looks as far as just like the basic building. Basically everything that takes place before painting. Uh, second criteria will be the actual painting. So, you know, how smooth your paint application is, uh, the color choices that you make, you know, which colors that you're using, do they go together well, are they placed well, or you have like nice details painted. Uh, and then like weathering will also be included in this category as well. Uh, the third criteria will just be your creativity. So any modifications that you make, that any modifications that you make to the kit. Um, so like modifying the pose or making your diorama or vignette. Uh, if you add LEDs or anything else that you do to customize it to make your kit more unique and more creative, that'll be also a very important aspect as well. Now, obviously. The photography is not necessarily a judging criteria, but you're, you should pay attention to your photography all, always just because it's for a contest. Uh, myself and the other judges, if we can't see the kit well, then we can't judge it well. So you need to take some nice photographs. As I'll always mention to you guys, if you don't have good proper lighting inside, uh, you don't have a very good camera, go outside, especially if it's like a little bit kind of hazy day. If you finish before the deadline, you know, wait for a day that's a good weather. If it's super sunny, your photos can tend to be a little bit too bright. And uh, really the optimal weather that you would want for is the kind of overcast, a little bit kind of hazy kind of day. Um, that way you get some natural diffusion of the sunlight. Uh, that would be ideal. And that's a, just a great way to get some good photographs. You don't need to worry about like uh, the background so much, but try to have somewhat of like a neutral background. Uh, if you're going outside, don't take your picture of your kit with like your truck in the background or something like that. It's going to be a little bit distracting, but what I would recommend you guys to do as far as like good photographs and what not to do and what to do for that is to take a look back at the uh, feedback sessions that we did for the clean versus weathered contest earlier this year. Uh, we did a number of different videos giving some feedback for the entries of that contest. And we talked a lot about the photography of those. So check those videos out if you missed that. But I think that should just about cover it for now. Um, obviously with the US Gundam store, uh, Link will be down in the video description below. We do now have all of the volume one of Gunnam Artifact now in stock. That was the reason why we were uh, holding off on the contest. We wanted to start this contest like a month ago, uh, but we were holding off waiting for the kits to come in stock so they'd be available for you guys to purchase. Uh, so if you need to get one of the kits or multiple of the kits or whatever you need to get uh, for this contest, you guys can get those from the store now. They're available now at the time of making this video anyway, so check those out. If you don't have the kit yet and you would like to participate in the contest, really looking forward to seeing what you guys do with these. Like I said, with them being just kind of small, relatively simple kits, but very nicely detailed, I think that there's a lot of opportunity there to really make them shine. I've seen some fantastic builds. If you guys are interested, look around like on Twitter. There's been a lot of really amazing builds with these so far and they're just really impressive just because of the size. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with for this contest. It'll be a great way to finish out this year and then next year we'll have, you know, a bunch more contests on the way for you guys. So if this one isn't for you, don't worry. There'll be more contests coming in the near future more opportunities for you guys to participate in those. Uh, but we thought this one would be a pretty fun and interesting one, unique kind of contest. So let me know your guys' thoughts. And of course, if you have any further questions, do feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and I'll answer those and include some updates if I need to update you guys with uh, any more information or anything like that. Uh, but for now, thank you all so much for watching and let's have fun with this new contest. I'll see you all soon. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.